She looks hungry. I think I'll stay out of her way. Keep away from that! His Eminence said not to touch anything! I wasn't gonna touch it. Just looking, Cobb, that's all. Just looking, eh? Well then, perhaps we can do a bit of a trade. How about I let you look in the sphere if... If... what? Well, the legends say that to gaze upon an uncloaked weaver brings death. Naturally. We clerics aren't given to such silly superstitions, but I'm curious. Let's answer this one once and for all, shall we? No! May we have some quiet, please? I can't even begin to invoke the dead with all that screaming. Well, he can't say he wasn't warned. Friend, I see Cobb has been lax in his duty. No matter. You're just in time to witness the dawn of a new era. You don't have the slightest idea of what you're doing. The pattern is already worn and frayed. If you rip a hole in it now, the consequences will be beyond anything you can imagine. Spare me your weaver mysticism, boy. The time has come when the dead shall no longer envy the living. You've torn the pattern completely open. And with it, the eyes of the dead. Behold! I have a very bad feeling about this. Who dares disturb the peace of those who sleep? I welcome and greet you, noble spirit. I am Bishop Mandible. Transultimate apostle of the anti secular conclave of clerics. And whom have I the honor of summoning? I don't think I want to be part of this conversation. No one obeyed any summoning of yours, foolish mortal. I have summoned you. I am Chaos. You have merely opened the door, and I have passed through it. For this, you shall be rewarded. Join me now, as my slave. I see it has been much too long since my last visit. I can't seem to hold on to this thing. Rusty? Is that you? Y you don't look at all well. I'm not well. Actually, I'm dead. I don't... I don't know what to say. You don't have to say a thing. What do I matter? 
I'm just another one of the dead. Oh, Rusty, I feel terrible. I and didn't that's know. that's not even the end of it. I'd go outside to wait for doomsday, like a good little ghost scene. But no sooner do I get settled again, but some stupid idiot shreds the universe apart and hauls us all back inside. There are a lot of very unhappy dead wandering around here. Let me tell you. I know. I was there when it happened. I might have known this was all your fault. No! No, it wasn't me. The bishop managed this one all on his own. Yeah? Well, there's going to be hell to pay, literally. There's talk among the dead that they're going to take over the world, starting with the forge. My home. Where we used to build strong things, good things. Thanks, but no thanks, friend. It was you and your stupid stick that got me into this mess. You did it. You brought me back. It is what you wanted, isn't it? Believe me, being alive is a lot more fun than being dead. But how did you do it? Well, healing your body was easy. You're alive because the pattern is torn and your soul was free to return to this side. Well, I must go, Bobbin. I've got to know what happened to the rest of my guild. And I must do the same. Good luck, Rusty. And be careful. Good fortune to you too, my friend. You are too late, wizard. The dead have increased their numbers here. Those not dead are suffering, and my songs were again useless. All that's left for us is to put an end to their misery. Come, and extend your help, if you can. Please, what became of us? I was just walking among legions of dead. You were saved by the mercy of yonder boy. We have not had the chance to thank you properly, wizard. But our memories are long, and we will not forget you soon. Hail and farewell. Come along now, before the dead ones return to the harvest. Master Goodmold. Ah, oh, the Weaver Boy. At least you have escaped the terror of the Dead Ones. It appears the Crystal Guard has not been so fortunate. But I don't understand. Why did you not use the Great Scythe? We never doubted the Scythe could save us. No, never, no, indeed. <laughs> Even chaos must fall under its blade. But we could not do it. To unleash such merciless evil would show us to be no better than our enemies. The entire world would have feared us when it was done. And to have become so much like our enemy was unthinkable. <laughs> Just unthinkable. And so you didn't use it? We knew the price. The best we could hope for was to defend it bravely. But we are not warriors. You mean... Chaos stole the scythe? We did what we could, but it was not enough. <laughs> Remember us, my young friend. Tell the world that we fought with courage 
and chose death with clarity above all else. Clarity. Welcome, Bobbin. You have joined us here at last. Where am I? You are outside the pattern, the home of the dead, and of those transcended. The shore of wonder? Yes, Bobbin, the shore of wonder. And you are the first to behold it with mortal eyes. Your journey has been long, and you must have many questions. You're the swan that appeared each year on my birthday, aren't you? You saw me clearly then. I was never sure. But those visits meant so much. My only chance to watch you grow. You see, the elders forbade me to set foot on Loom Island just after you were born. I thought you came to visit me, but I never quite believed it. Call it a mother's curiosity. For indeed, Loom Child, that is who I am. My mother is a swan? Indeed. In mortal life, however, I was Lady Signa Threadbare, banished by the elders seventeen long years ago for drawing an unforeseen infant out of the loom. How I've longed to know you, and you to know me, my son. Liar! That's just not true. My mother is buried in the weaver's graveyard. Oh, dear Hetchel, she and the elders put that stone there so you wouldn't ask too many questions. Hetchel vowed to protect you forever, Bobbin. She is my dearest friend, and she loves you very much. But I fear her love has driven her to recklessness. What do you mean? Where is she? She flew off to Loom Island to confront the Dead Ones. The Dead Ones are after her? It's not Hetchel they're after, my son. They want the Loom itself. If Chaos masters its secrets, the pattern will be hers to control. Hetchel plans to destroy the Loom. If chaos doesn't consume her first. No, I've got to go back there, now! You won't get far in that direction. The loom lies beyond the lake. No, you must try a more subtle strategy. Oh, what do you propose? The dead ones move between the holes your bishop friend rent in the pattern. If you weave the holes closed, it will be harder for them to follow you. I think I'll stay out of there. That dragon looked rather hungry. That's 
the last hole. Now, let's go find Hetchel. Her eyes, they're just like mine. Allah? Those are the same four threads spun by the elders. They're still echoing in the loom. <coughs> Mind yourself, Bobbin. Get your distaff ready. You must unmake the loom now before chaos takes control. What? How? I don't know what draft to use. <laughs> Birds and children have no business wielding such power. Weavers are the only ones who do have the right to use this power. Destiny has blessed you, young Threadbear. For you alone will live on to pass your guilt secrets to others more worthy of them. I invite you to serve my new empire as advisor. Me? You? Advisor? Of course. I will expect your full cooperation in this historic exchange of goodwill. After all, anything else may bring harm to our relationship. Don't listen to her, Bobbin. Heed me now. Here are the threads that will unmake the loom. Silence. Say something, please. I need that draft. Enough! I lose patience in the presence of inferior beings. You will now instruct me in the use of this fascinating instrument. Over my dead body. Preference, no. Goodness. Now, Bobbin, quickly, the threads you need are... Ducks are meant to be eaten, not heard. Now, I believe we were discussing the secrets of the loop. Uh, 
close your eyes now, Bobbin. But keep your ears open. Here descends the third shadow. That bird has annoyed me once too often. Now, my esteemed advisor, where were we before we were so rudely distracted? Hetchel's black feather. She left one behind. And so she did. I think I shall keep it as a souvenir of our little encounter. I want that feather. Give it to me. My, my. Impudent, aren't we? Bobbin, Bobbin, you did it. The loom is unmade. You ignorant fools! Do you comprehend what you have done? None of us can pass across this rift your weaver mister has so blindly created. Your pious meddling has brought the end of my dream. You will hear for all eternity the cries of those you have abandoned, Bobbin Threadbear. You will always know that you have left them under my rule. We abandon no one. When our side of the pattern is mended, we will return and put an end to your evil. Come, Loon Child. It is time for us to begin our destinies anew. Leaving so soon, Weaver? I was looking forward to spending more time with you. you can, young Threadbear, and know that we will most assuredly meet again. I am ready, Mother. Let's go. <laughs>